Today I'm using Lahua Blossom Honey to make two really fun meads. We're making a traditional mead with it, and we're getting a little crazy. We're gonna make a banana cream pie mead with that same honey. Let's get started. So this honey is super interesting and fun. Lahua Blossom Honey is from Hawaii and features some really fun characteristics that will play well with lots of flavors. This honey is light floral and somewhat creamy. You can buy this honey from lots of places on the internet, but I got mine from Sean Harris, who's a beekeeper in Hawaii. I'm gonna share his contact information below if you would like to order some for yourself. My first time using this honey was not what I expected. I love making traditional meads with these kinds of honeys, but my first exploration into mead making with it was a lactamel. A lactamel is a milk-based mead. Needless to say, I don't know how much of that honey character was really retained after that mixture. There's a whole video on my channel about the creation of that mead, and I will say, it actually was surprisingly good. You can find that video in the description below. So, I wanted to attempt to make more mead with it. We're making a traditional mead so I can see what it tastes like without any added flavors. Because this honey has somewhat of a creamy, rich note to me, I felt like it would pair well with bananas. I wanted to attempt a banana cream pie mead with it. Here are the recipes for both of the brews we're creating today. We started with a big batch of mead and then split it out into two different meads. So we started by making our large batch of must and then pitched our yeast. We're using the Lalvin 71B for this because I think it's a clean fermenter and I believe that it will pair well and be a good yeast for this traditional. Our starting gravity is 1.070. We are using Fermate O to feed our yeast at the 24 hour mark. I'm not planning on step feeding this, but it would be a preferred nutrient schedule if you can do that. This brew took about four weeks to completely ferment. After the primary, our gravity is 1.000. We then took and racked the brew into two containers so we could start both of our recipes. The traditional mead went into a wide mouth 1.4 gallon container, and the other three gallons went into a wide mouth carboy for the banana cream pie version. We stabilized both of these brews with potassium sorbate and metoisulfite. You don't have to use these. You can pasteurize your brew if you'd like to do something different. We then let the brew set for about two weeks to continue to clear up. Now that it's stabilized, we can go ahead with our next steps. For the traditional, we're gonna add half an ounce of medium toast French oak and let that sit for about seven to 10 days. This will give us more tannin and oak character that will make this mead feel more complex. We are then gonna back sweeten with six ounces of Lahua honey to bring back more sweetness and honey character. Our final gravity for the traditional was 1.006. We did clear the traditional with Chitosan and Kisasol to help drop out any of those things stuck in suspension, so it is crystal clear. After we had cleared it, we bottled it, and that's that. The banana cream pie version is a little more complex. We're first gonna start by taking three pounds of cut bananas. These bananas sat with pectic enzyme on them for 24 hours, and they were frozen and then thawed. We add those bananas to this brew. They were kind of mushy, so they just kind of went through a funnel, super easy. Because this is stabilized, there should not be any more fermentation, so these bananas should be contributing flavor and sugar to the brew. We let those sit for about two weeks. We made sure to lightly stir those bananas every couple days to keep them submerged, and then we racked off of them and added our graham crackers in a brew bag. This really helps get the graham crackers out of the brew easier. We're hoping to get a more crust-like flavor from the graham crackers. Those sat for about seven days, and then we racked off of those it was now time to start back sweetening. We're using brown sugar for more of that graham cracker and pie flavor. We're also back sweetening with more honey to pronounce that flavor. And lastly, we added some vanilla extract to add a softer mouthfeel and more flavor to this brew. You can use vanilla bean. I just like extract in this case. The final gravity for this brew was 1.030. We were able to use that Chitosan and Kisosol for the traditional, but it did not work for this banana cream pie version, and that is okay. We bottled the banana cream pie mead, and we're ready to hop into a tasting for both of these. Let's go ahead and get to it. All right. BC from doing the most. That's me. 
Welcome. <laughs> this is, we've been recording some stuff. You yeah. should go check out his channel. It's the fourth video today? Yeah, my, this video won't be out for a long time, so we'll probably, all the videos I, you're thinking of will probably have been posted by the time this one comes out. So Excellent. Um, we're, we're here. We're prepared. We're, we're prepared. Someone's prepared. I don't know if it's me. <laughs> we're going to drink the trad okay. from this video and the banana cream pie. Again, unfiltered opinions are, are appreciated. Okay. Um, let's go. Love it. We're going trad first because you should do that. That's yeah. just... That way you kind of get a baseline for yeah. what your honey tastes like. Yeah. What yeast was this? That's why I love doing those 71B, maybe. <laughs> I'll put a big okay. old red X if I'm wrong up there. Okay. I think... Whoa, that is distinct. Mm -hmm. I've used this before, but um, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, it was in the lactamel. <laughs> oh, okay. And I remember being like, I gotta do something else with it because I can't let my only experience with this be a lactamel. Yeah. What do you get on the nose? Bubble gum. Oh, interesting. I yeah. don't, I can see what you're talking about. You know, like but a I'm double having... bubble. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit, yeah. That is. Yeah. Bubblegum, flowers, vanilla, marshmallow. This is actually my bubblegum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never again. Never again. The more I get in there, I pick up a little bit of um, alcohol. Okay. I don't know how old this is. October of this past year. Okay. Twenty twenty. So twenty-two. It's an appropriate level of alcohol. Yeah. We're like we're two and a half months old. Something. Mm -hmm. Whatever the math is there. I'm picking up florals. I'm picking up. That, you know, that polony kind of thing that you're looking for in a traditional. But yeah, when I when I let my nose take a beat and then come back into it, the first thing that I'm hit with is pink bubble gum. That's interesting. But not in a bad way. Yeah. I'm not saying like it's a negative. It's I just, can see that what you're talking about. Yeah. Hmm. Like a, it it makes me think of the color pink. It's almost got like that um, same uh, feel as metal foam. Like mm -hmm. the metal foamy, um, sugary, like mm -hmm. kind of candy sugar. Yeah. Yeah. Like cotton candy. Yeah. Okay, here we go. I don't know why I wasn't expecting it to taste sweet. <laughs> it is, yeah, it's back sweetened for sure. Okay. Not dry. I don't make a lot of dry stuff at this point, I'll be honest. Yeah, I get that. I mean, it's a little bubble gummy on the palate too. Yeah. That's very interesting. Have you had big red soda? I have not, no. Oh. That sounds okay. interesting. You gotta try big red soda. It's basically like a bubblegum flavored soda. It's red. Oh, it's I've bright red. I remember Big Red because I would take the, you'd eat the gum and you take the wrapper and then you'd lick the wrapper and you put it on your forehead. That's a different Big Red. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever do that? That's bubblegum though. Yeah, there is there is a gum called Big Red. I'm I'm talking oh, we're about, about something else. Thing. I was thinking of the bubblegum. That's like no, a cinnamon. This is Did a you soda. ever do that though? Am I, maybe I'm the only sure one. Sure didn't. <laughs> um, no, your... it's got that. Um, Inca Cola mm. is an, is another like bubble gummy kind of soda. Yeah, I can see that. I can see the sugary. I'm just thinking. I, I don't want to say fake sugar. I mean, like a carbonated hydromel, this would really hit. Yeah, with it kind of hits the meadow foamy vibes. It's floral. It's delicate. There's, you're right. There's some of that meadow foamy character of like marshmallows, vanilla, uh -huh. very soft, silky, kind of mouth feel to it. There's some good tannin in here. That helps it cling around, so I'm not having to take right. five drinks for every taste. I can kind of just sit and experience it. Uh -huh. The acid balance is pretty good on this too. I don't know if you did anything to the acid, but it's I'm it's hitting just right for me. Okay, like I'm not feeling like it's too acidic. I'm not feeling like it's too flabby and uh -huh. bland. I quite like this. I think it's everything you're saying is spot on. It is pretty smooth. I mean, it's only, uh, what did I say, 9.2-ish percent. So, I mean, it's not super hot. It's not your traditional 13 percenter. Did you, what did you do for tannin? Oak. I, okay. I did some oak. I was going to yeah. say, there's a woodiness in mm -hmm. there. American? I think it was a medium toast French. French. Yeah, I, I almost taste like oak chips that like, is that what it was? It was chips, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that like, this is a little bit of raw wood, a little bit of, mm -hmm. of of what you would expect from the oak. I, I used to nose. use oak You get a lot of oak the on the nose too. I feel like it's very prevalent there. Okay, I'm glad that my brain wasn't mistaking yeah. something there. I, I quite like this. The honey's super interesting. It is quite, kind of meadow foam family adjacent. Mm -hmm. and I haven't had a lot of honeys like that, that really present as that candy sugar, fake sugar, cotton candy, you know, realm. Yeah. No, I like this a lot. This is a, 
I mean, I that's the only Lahua blossom tradition <laughs> I've had, but this is a really good example. Um, well done. Well, let's flip over to the other side. Way less of a traditional sort of mead. <laughs> this is, um, I'm sure other people in the universe have created their own banana cream pie meads in the past. You know, I've had yours. I've had this one. Yeah. And I've had Mandy's from uh -huh. Baywood Mead. And I gotta say, it's inspired me to want to do my own. It's quite fun. That's honestly, and I, obviously this is not clear. I kind of tried, but then also I dumped so many graham crackers and mm. stuff in that I was like, I feel like a lot of graham cracker, when you try to clear, like part of the little particle of being in there is the, the graham flavor. Cracker, yeah. Yeah, graham yeah. cracker flavor. So when you're trying to clear it, you're like, well, I'm taking away all of it. And when I was a kid, we would go grocery shopping. Uh -huh. we, had to, we had to drive all the way to this Walmart that was like 20 miles away because we mm. lived in the middle of the country. And so like part of the like, the encouragement for me to go and help grocery shop was I got to pick out a dessert. Oh, uh, yeah. Right? And so I'd always get one of those freezer banana cream pies. Mm. And you just like put it in the freezer, you cut yourself a slice every now and then. It's like. So you're reminiscing. This yeah, is, like this This is such a nostalgic. It smells like, I mean, it's it smells, oh, without putting lactose, I didn't put any, uh, maltodextrin is something you could put in there. Lactose could mm. also help with that. It does have a kind of creamy side, and I think it's the vanilla that mm. really coming through. You can smell the graham cracker. Yeah, the that's the spices in there. in there. Yeah, it's just this. This smell is so nostalgic to me. <laughs> it just smells Puts like you back I'm, in a car. <laughs> like I'm seven years old again, right? All right, here we go. Yeah, and it's just you nailed the flavor. I I quite love. That. I think it's delightful. Yeah. It is sweet, very sweet, but it's banana cream pie. I feel like you yeah you I gotta mean, lean you, into that. You almost have a little bit of a cheesecakey flavor in there. Mm. It's just like a little bit of a pungent yeah, note. Yeah, I see what you're saying. That's really nice because it adds like an undercurrent of character. So it's not just like bananas and spices and mm -hmm. vanilla, but there's a little bit of like a tart, puckering note in there that again like balances things yeah. out. It's bananas, really nice. Bananas in secondary or post fermentation, like stabilizing, I feel like that's the best way to do it mm -hmm. because you're Use allowing- really ripe bananas? Yeah, I, uh, what I did was I got a couple pounds of bananas, chopped them up, well, let them ripe, ripen, and then chopped them up, froze them, you know, just and then basically threw them in. And they were all sloshy, slimy, you know, so they just kind of went down a funnel. And had you stabilized prior to that? Yes. Or? Okay. Yeah. So that may be another place your haze is coming from, mm -hmm. is the starches and those bananas. Yeah. Which is okay. Again, I don't think Nothing that's wrong the other world. If this went to a competition, I think they would probably dock it for, you know, the five points you get, six points you get for yeah. appearance, but hopefully it would make it up in the, in the taste realm. This is really good. I think the first time I tried this, I told you, it tastes like the banana cream pie that you get at the, like... The greasy spoon diner mm, that's yeah. in the like you press the button and the thing <laughs> yeah. like rotates around and you choose yeah. your pie. That's what this tastes like. And you've nailed that flavor. I appreciate that. I mean that's super good. The first time I've tried to make this and a little experimentation, but uh, I will put the recipes for both of them. Traditional is obviously super simple. Honey water yeast, some oak. I say super simple. Some people don't have a ton of experience with meat making, so please don't hear me say that and go assume that I'm knocking you but the banana cream pie is much more complex so there I is <laughs> the recipe yeah. with i think some steps and stages so thank you to doing the most for being a part of the tasting you can find his channel he has done a ton of meat recipes a ton of wine recipes mm -hmm. um, dipped your toes in some beer mm -hmm. and some braggots if you want to find any recipes there and he's been recently doing some uh, lots of testing with ab stuff um and C and D and E. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Multiple variable testing. So if you enjoy that kind of stuff, you can check them out. Link below, of course. But thanks for doing this. Thank you for the opportunity. This has been interesting. I, I this may be the my first and only Lahua traditional. So I'm, wow. I'm pleased by day. the experience. If you a uh, little shout out to our side thing we do all the time. It's called the Homebrew Guys. It's the Homebrew Guys podcast. We do a live podcast with chatting with people and we talk about internet brewing news and all this stuff. So you can find us at homebrew guys and it, normally we stream on his channel so go ahead and make sure you're subscribed and all that so you know when we're streaming and you can download the audio version uh -huh. wherever podcasts are heard exactly you can find us and listen to us and uh we just like to jabber and uh and t talk and have fun it's a lot of fun it is a lot of fun i really like the aspect where we 
we scour the internet for what's happening during the month. There's and a then lot like of wild stuff. Create a digest <laughs> of it where we can just be like, can you believe he did that? Oh yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. So go yeah. check us out there, go check out Doing the Most and uh, we'll see you next time. Cheers. Cheers. Well, this is a bit of an interesting update. It's been a couple months since I did that tasting. And let me just show you what's happened with this brew. So you remember how I talked about how it wasn't clear in that the graham cracker flavor was probably part of the lack of clarity? Um, update. Every bit of graham cracker has dropped to the bottom of this bottle and this thing is crystal clear. So let's see if the graham cracker flavor really was the particulates or not. I'm kind of curious. It still smells the same from what I remember. Still vanilla-y and all those other flavors. Banana. It tastes the same. So maybe I'm wrong. I think, I, I know I'm wrong now. The graham cracker particulates are not necessarily all the flavor. It still has a crusty kind of graham cracker side. It's like smooth. I mean, it, it's, the big test here is, does it still taste like graham crackers? And the truth is, it does. So I think next time I make this, which I will, I'm gonna clear it. Hopefully to be this clear. I mean, look how good that looks. That is a, cl a clear brew. Uh, <laughs> it means all my bottles that I bottled to save for um, competitions are hazy and probably will have that sludge at the bottom. If you wanted to know if clarity affects the flavor, it doesn't in this case. So go ahead and make this brew, clear it up, and you'll still have yourself a very good banana cream pie mead. Have a good one.